Hi, and welcome to another quick and easy QBD brute force method guide. This time we're using a one-handed crossbow and an anti-dragon shield. It's not the Visage upgraded version. I'm not exactly sure if that's the name or not. It's the one you just get from the Duke of Lumbridge or the Grand Exchange. So notable differences between this and using a two-handed weapon is it is a lot slower. But you actually end up taking around the same amount of damage because you have all sorts of defensive abilities you're able to use. One thing I will note, the ability I have in the ninth slot on my hotbar actually isn't useful here. I do swap it out in about two minutes, so if you're copying the hotbar, skip ahead a little bit until that's changed. Other than that, as soon as you pop in and she wakes up from her nap, drink your anti-fire, that's the most important. If you're using them, prayer renewal and ranging potions just to help out and start attacking away again you know using that basic uh, ability helps build adrenaline alternate that and the other ones I do very poorly with it but the resonance which makes the next attack hit you counts as a basic ability so you get adrenaline from it and you the next time you're attacked you also heal that's also good to throw in every so often just to help with healing um, yeah, this uh, this attempt I'm using pretty much just basic, straightforward equipment. It's available to everyone for a pretty decent price. I mean, if you're trying to build a royal crossbow, you're already looking at like four or five million as of the time of making this video. So the you know, 20k or so for glory. I think the berserker ring. I think I used in this was just because I had it. Just something to stick in there. I actually don't get too many critical hits during this video, so it doesn't really help a ton. So, you know, bring an explorer ring for the prayer point or something, you know, whatever. If you have an archer ring, use that instead. Or any of the imbued rings, for that matter, from uh, mobilizing armies is, great, is just perfect for this. Otherwise, yeah, like I said, it's not a whole lot different from the original I had made. You just stand in the spot I'm in, just to the left of the pedestal, podium, ankh, urn, statue, whatever you want to call it. I'm trying to make up names to make to fill this, because it's a 20 minute video of me trying to cover stuff. Uh, just other things of note, a couple of the good defensive abilities. Debilitate, I I believe reduces damage, doesn't reduce the damage from the dragon fire. The Barricade Ultimate, however, does. You actually completely nullify the flame walls, and that's especially helpful on Phase 3 and 4, when she starts breathing um, three waves of fire. You can avoid two, because, or rather, avoid one just by standing still, but the other two you'll get hit. So especially if that one you're standing on is first or last, you can use Barricade to nullify the damage from the other two waves. And that's generally, it's 1,500 damage twice for those, when you have three walls of fire. Like right now, if it happens to buy, it's just 1,500, obviously, because it's one. Otherwise, just strategy-wise for this, it's just a matter of building it up. I really, I didn't actually think to use Barricade till later, but while the uh, Rejuvenate Ultimate was on cooldown, I should have been using Barricade to... Um, block the firewall when I didn't want to move. I didn't end up needing it, but I could have saved a bit more food here. Also different from the previous setup, I have a mace with me. The rune crossbow I'm using is a little too weak for the tormented souls, and they just take way too long to kill using the wrong type with it. Using something like a crystal bow, or if you, maybe if you have a chaotic crossbow or an armadillo crossbow, you could make do with it, um, killing them with that, but if you're using a rune or possibly even dragon or lesser, you definitely, definitely want to go ahead and bring a crush weapon with you. I use a dragon mace again, it's like 20, 30k or so. Um, we're not killing stuff too quick, so again, I want to clear the field of all the little, and any, gro any grot worms that spawn. I was slow on clicking the statue, you normally can't avoid getting any whatsoever. And also, if you have them, um, Dreadnips are very helpful in here from the Dominion Tower. If you have them, 
just drop them on a hop, hot bar, stand one tile further uh, west, so that the, dread, the Dreadnap doesn't appear behind the little podium thing. And then anytime there's a firewall, just take a step towards it again so you're standing in that sweet spot. And you will be good as far as uh, Dreadnap's not getting stuck. And they add quite a bit of damage, so that's not a bad thing. I think originally I was going to attempt to ignore the Tormented Soul and just kind of burn my way through this. Because, you know, it's only one. And with a little luck, she just absorbs it and kills it herself initially. I didn't know how that was going to work out, so I figured I'd try it in the process. I eventually decide that, you know, you know, this isn't quite working, I need to kill it. So I just swap to my melee bar. It'll generally die pretty quickly, so just use that as an opportunity to build extra adrenaline. For this phase, for phase two, when you get onward to phase three, you may want to start using thresholds, just to get rid of them quickly. I think it's pulverized, where you get like three or four swings quickly is pretty decent for it. Otherwise, just, you know, I hear I have another soul, but whenever you get the chance, just keep wailing away on her. Use Rejuvenate, the ultimate, to heal yourself when possible. Use Barricade to block fire damage when possible. Um, did I swap it? I think I did swap it out at this point, at the ninth ability slot. To the one that increases damage every time you're hit for 10 seconds, up to 100% extra damage. I don't know if it's a threshold. Honestly, with a rune crossbow, it's not worth using. I really should have been using, like, ex not, I think it's exploding shot on the 8th slot, dual shot or rapid fire more often. It just, there's not enough benefit to it over just using a straightforward damage spell. And otherwise, yeah. The camera zooming in, it's a bug with switching weapons. And... yeah. It pops back out to full normal zoom a couple seconds later, so it's not too huge of a deal. While I'm here doing this thing, um, this actually is probably not the best run for the dem purpose of demonstrating this, but I screw up pretty badly coming up. I, you know, I think it's in phase three once there's three walls of fire. And I screw up horribly where I'm actually running in the fire and I have to spam click food to just, you know, heal up quickly. And I believe I also don't turn back on the ranged attack or strength prayers. At the very least, I recommend using attack, if not using Rager the whole time. Augury. Whatever the ranged version of piety is. Um, yeah, so, again, this is not the perfect run. This is not using the best equipment. It's just grabbing stuff, going in, ignoring the majority of the mechanics involved, like dodging, um... Dodging, um... Dodging walls of fire dealing with tormented souls, dealing with time stops, things like that. Um, I, I need to stop saying um, it drives me nuts when people in videos say um repeatedly. <clears throat> Otherwise, the tormented souls, you can walk through them, and their attack, that little cloud of darkness, doom they create, will damage them. It, if you don't have the timing down when it's only one, it's kind of difficult to get it. Once there's two, it's actually pretty easy to hit either one of them. When they spawn, the second you hear, see the text, just take two steps left so you're on the opposite side of one. You'll still get hit by the first one's cloud if you don't get the timing right, but the second one will hit the first one. So you you take one hit, hit less damage, so it's like 900 less damage. And the, the other Torment, the soul, will take 900 damage, rather than you taking, like, 1,800 damage combined between the two hits. And again, once the Queen Black Dragon gets pretty low, you'll want to move a little closer to the southwest, so when the pillar, the bridge and the pillar light up, you can just run over and click quickly, and hopefully not get too many Grotworms. I think I end up getting two here. You know, 
it is what it is, what can you do? And here phase three starts and we have three walls of fire. Ideally, I would have discovered the awesomeness that is barricade, and like right here, I could have nullified uh what was it? Three thousand points of damage by barricading right after that first wall pass where there was the hole in it, and I missed it anyway. That also would have assumed I had uh the adrenaline to use it, but you know, I didn't, but whatever. Uh, anything else I need to cover in particular? Yeah, the Queen Black Dragon, she changes colors and weaknesses, but... So if you really want a hybrid, again, that'd be more for a... Actually killing her normally, because you want to kill her repeatedly kind of situation, not just a... I just want to get this stupid Royal Crossbow done and not have to come back here until I need to repair the thing way, way in the future. And, yeah, here there's two. I just, I choose just to kill them outright. It's not worth the time to wait, because getting hit for 1,800 damage every 15 seconds or so from them, not something I want to be dealing with. So, just kill them outright. Again, here, I could barricade through that second and third wall of damage. If you're feeling a little, uh... A little crazy. You can try to get the second walls. There are you just look where they are on the map and basically just stand with there. There's no um, really easy way to click it other than just figuring it out and getting used to the exact positions. But yeah, once you get them down, at least getting the left and the center one, then you only have to hit two. Any at any point, you're only going to get hit by one wall fire. So, that's a good way to redu greatly reduce the amount of damage you end up taking. I believe coming up here shortly is where I screw up quite badly and I'm running all over the place through the fire. Okay, it's not this one. Okay, It's coming up at some point in the future. I end up using a lot of extra food there. Otherwise, this would have been well within a Siege Turtle, or War Tortoise. War Tortoise? A not pack yak Beast of Burden, worth of food. Terror Bird probably still would be... That would be cutting it pretty close. If you're going to do that, it might be worth bringing a... Uh, couple Saradomen Brews in Flasks, nevertheless, just to have... A little bit more healing per slot. I think sharks is 1,600 per slot, where a Saradomen brew is 3,000, or even possibly upgrading to rocktails. But those are they are a little more pricey. I think they might not actually be compared to um, the Saradomen brews. I'm not entirely sure. But the Saradomen brews also don't regenerate. Or no, sorry, they don't regenerate. Uh, they don't decrease adrenaline, that's what I'm trying to say. That might have been right here where I screwed up. Did I just completely miss myself like panic? No, okay, I still have a whole bunch of food. Here? And I... Okay, no, I did record my mouse. Alright, um... Yeah, Saradom and Bruise, if you use them right before you use the healing ultimate, which I believe, I believe is Rejuvenate. Rejuvenate also restores reduced combat stats, so ranging potions, yeah, right here is where I screw up pretty badly and I have to start spam eating food. I came close to dying. By that misclick, I took extra damage from the fire and having the tormented souls there at the same time. That just went real bad. I ate a bunch of, I ate uh, six pieces of food. Seven now, so I did. yeah. But yeah, Saradom and Bruise, right before you use Rejuvenate, you cancel out the stat reduction, so if you bring two, maybe two or three flasks worth, or not even bother with the flash, just potions worth. Although, I think at that point, it's 2,000, 2,100, you'd be better off with the Rock Tail. So if you're going to bring flasks of Saradom and Bruise, do it. Otherwise, skip it in favor of Rock Tails. Rocktails are 19, 18, something, I don't know. 
Don't bother with four dose potions of Saradome and Bruce. Not worth the stat reductions. And here is about where I start figuring out barricade, I believe. Like right here, you can see I hit it. No damage, and again, no damage. But in either case, I believe I stayed under um, 18 additional food. I didn't pull out of the Beast of Burden a second time. Let's see, let's Yeah, I have 17 additional is sitting in my inventory right now. 16 additional. Sometimes I'm not good at math. 2, 3, 4 rows plus 1. Yeah, 17 additional shark in my inventory. I don't believe I end up pulling any more out of my piece of burden. But, yeah, so any extra that was in there, it just comes down to the fact that... Um, where am I going with this? It might take you an extra attempt or two to get it, but you're really only wasting shark. If you get to the point where, like, I have a house teletab in my inventory, if it gets to the point where you're looking at it and it's like, okay, this is not looking good, I'm out of food, I'm not on the right, I'm not on the last phase yet, or she's just, I'm on the f right phase and she's just being extremely difficult, Teleport out, try again, you don't have to worry about getting to your grave quick enough and any of that stuff. The grave can appear outside the cave near Port Sarum. It can sometimes appear inside the cave. But, yeah, it's, like I said, it's possible to do this without really, and here, I believe, I. it's like, oh, I got her, just one more hit, running over, oh, great, perfect, let's go. Onto the bridge, oh, no, wait, she's still got, like, 20 hit points left. Crap, so I, I think I took a hit from the bridge, and she goes straight into a fire breath. And coming up here is where it starts to get interesting, because again, I'm running kind of low on supp supplies, but you know, that barricade got that adrenaline full just in time, save a ton of hit points and not taking that extra damage. And that's basically what got me through to the last phase in for this video. Now, I get lucky and she uses her breath extremely quickly, but she also summons a time stop spirit almost immediately. They're weak to crush damage. The bow, crossbow just is not going to cut it this time around, but you want to look out for that. The Queen Black Dragon gathers her strength to breathe in cr extremely hot flames. As soon as you see that, start clicking that brandish on your crossbow while in the center, and you will get, in theory, pull it out in time, and, um, what am I trying to say? You'll pull it out, brandish it, complete it, and even if you die, you can just protect it. Like here, I protect the crossbow and the, um, the a Ava's accumulator thing, so I don't have to go back and buy it from her. And that's just a matter of going to Port Sarum and just grabbing the rest of your stuff if you happen to die. If you live, well, you can either keep on trying to kill her, because you're already at that point, you hit the last wave, why not? Or go ahead and just teleport out, and enjoy your nice, newly forged and completed Royal Crossbow. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. Feel free to comment, rate, and or subscribe, and have a great day.